Maybe I should start calling the newer series Good Harry Hill and the older series Evil Harry Hill. Welcome back to Evil Harry Hill. Series 4, episode 4. Oh right, this drink is mostly green. So it's kind of <laughs> Welcome to TV Burp. Hugh Fernley Whittingstool's diet finally catches up with him. I don't Whoa! Know who's in that. On the British what? Isles, Alan Dude. Titchmarsh. Wait, what show is that? Hugh Fernley Whittingstool's diet finally catches up with him. I don't Animal know who's Nightmare. In that. What the hell? On the British he just Isles, pushed the Alan back Titchmarsh in. Titchmarsh <laughs> gets tough on moles. Alan Titchmarsh says, "What on moles?" <laughs> Dirty camera on the bill, actors lend a hand. Hello? Ah, that's filthy, yeah. You know what it's like, little fellas? You're walking through the woodland, and suddenly you stumble upon a young girl in a clearing. Excuse me, fair maiden, I, uh, I wonder if I might just have a, a quick... I would like to get oh. some... Oh, yeah. That's oh, hair, bro. Oh, no, no, it's nothing. No, it's nothing. Oh. I mean that. Oh. Of course not. No, this was Beyond River Cottage with our old friend Hugh Fernley Whittingstall. Previously, he was cooking lamb's hearts and tongues and nettles. Just how do you qualify to be cooked by Hugh Fernley Whittingstall? <laughs> Catching a conga has put me in a bit of a quandary. There aren't many fish with a worse culinary reputation. But then I'm also thinking, waste not, want not. Conger eel, you're coming to River Cottage. <laughs> Skinned and headless, oh. the body of this great eel is placed in a fish kettle on some sliced fennel, onions. I like the way he's giving such a detailed recipe. Like anyone's going to go out and make it. Two yeah, I know, right? <laughs> wine and two Point. liters of water. Yeah, two bottles of wine. That'll just about take the edge off it. <laughs> I don't remember huge. seeing conger eel on the fish counter in the supermarket. Hey, 40 pounds of conger eel, please. Now leave the head on, gives me something to talk to while I'm cleaning the spuds. So, he's cooking the conger eel, but even Hugh knows that that's not going to go down too well, so he takes the edge off it with a few lobsters. Freezing lobsters for several hours before boiling them is the prescribed method for humane dispatch. They fall into a deep torpor and are dead before they wake up. Yeah, that's a humane way. Uh, I guess. Freeze them, then boil them. Yeah. Right. Before they wake up, they're dead. Yeah. Right. What did the lobsters think of that? Well, we managed to get hold of uh, one of the lobsters' diaries. He keeps a diary. <laughs> one of the lobsters. Let's have a look here. Uh, here we go. Wednesday, 31st of March, 1999. Uh, I swam about a bit, rested on a rock. Right, that's, uh, okay, skipping ahead. Thursday, the 20th of May 2000, swam about a bit in the morning, caught a prawn. The conga eel is getting very smug, saying no one has tried to catch him yet because he has a very poor culinary reputation. <laughs> Jumping ahead. Here we go. November the 5th, 2004. Met Hugh Fernley Whittingstall off River Cottage. Seems very nice, although his kitchen stinks of dead conga eels. <laughs> November the 6th, suddenly got very cold, feel quite sleepy. Oh. November the 7th, morning, suddenly unbearably hot, afternoon, woke up dead. <laughs> so what else is on the menu? This one will be medium. Medium? Be very rare. And there'll be a few little Oh, the cooking does. I was going to say, that's huge, ends. bro. Wait a minute, I've seen those before somewhere. Doctor, here quickly! This is Doctor Who. <laughs> oh, well. Giant maggots! Get back in that roasting tin. Anybody know what episode that is? Let me know. Back. Yes, with Britain's worst wife. Boo! <laughs> First up, Laura. And if you want to be sure your kids are ready for school in the morning... Boo! Kids even go to bed. In their school clothes. Put them to bed in the school clothes. <laughs> Here's another contestant, Kel. Oh she can't God. even open a microwave. Did she really just say open sesame? <laughs> <laughs> Is your fallback position, isn't it? After everything else, <laughs> after everything else has failed, open sesame. <laughs> but 
But she perseveres. How do you know when a pizza is ready? Do you just put it in and wait until it goes brown and then take it out? Yeah, right. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> put it in, wait for it to go brown. <laughs> right, that's all foods. Chicken, is it brown yet? <laughs> Beef, is it brown yet? <laughs> Congareel, does it stink yet? <laughs> She's the only person I know who uses a smoke alarm as a timer. <laughs> Here's Kerry, whose speciality is Italian food, apparently. <laughs> nice to see a home-cooked meal, but then again, we are talking mayonnaise pasta topped with corned beef. Enjoy. <laughs> Prison. What's that? Pasta chavonese. <laughs> Prison. Hey. Hey. She also does a, a penne con ketchup and a <laughs> linguine al Branston. <laughs> EastEnders now, not for the first time, a strange black cab arrived on the square. Who on earth could be in it? You're gonna be long, mate. It's all right, mate. I'll walk from here. Keep the change. Oh, it's Den again. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it strange how people end up looking like they're straw donkeys? <laughs> <laughs> Den and his donkey. That could be the new test card. <laughs> I like it. At least Pat was pleased to see him. Here, you've got a satellite up there, haven't you? Keeping an eye on us. Whoa, damn watch. No, Pat, no. He's <laughs> trying to put all that behind him. <laughs> and I'm sure, like me, your heart sank when you saw this. I'm sure a good-looking fella like you won't be single for long anyway. Not a football competition again. <laughs> We've got weeks of this. I want to manage it. What are we going to call it? He's no good. He can't be in it. Someone's dropped out. You have to step in at the last minute. Cool. I never knew you was really good at football. Please. That's my favorite still game episode. This. You know, couldn't one of the Ferreras get ill again or something? <laughs> so... It's the Wolford Wanderers, and Billy Mitchell is thrilled to be managing the team. And, of course, he's got a new baby in the family. Tomorrow you'll be able to tell Freddie that you were the first manager of Wolford Wanderers. Do you think you'd be proud of me? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why would he be? Hey? Would he be proud of a dog in a wig? Hey? I would. This old football thing. I don't know. But it does give Billy a chance to have a bit of fun with a Subutio set. He turns on a sixpence. He's just got Minty a beat. The EastEnders Subutio set. <laughs> We've got it here. Look, there they are. Oh, All sick. the players. There's uh, Gary there. There's uh, Alfie, Minty. Then, of course, there's... Uh, Billy, the manager, Billy Mitchell, in his, his stinky coat. Then we've got Cat Slater. There she is. Ah. Still, uh... Got well arm. There's well arm. Look. There's, uh... Ronnie Ferreira. There he is. With his kidney. Oh, there he is. Uh, and who's this arriving on the square in a black taxi? Could it be? Oh, it's Sedan again with his little... <laughs> donkey. Yeah, with his little... Oh, and who, who's that driving it? Look. Can you see? Oh, it's me, look. Look. Oh, dear. I'm losing control of the taxi. I'm run... Oh, no. I'm oh, God, why? No. Yeah. And I'll never win the football Anything match. But the East End Pubs football team competition story. Damn it. Casualty now. And oh, fitting for hasn't grasped what's happened to Finn. We've been carrying out further forensic tests on a metal bar close to where we found Finn. The tests show that the blood on the bar is Finn's. What are you saying? <laughs> I must invite her around for a game of Cluedo. <laughs> the bill now, and the bin men have missed out Todd Carty again. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Why throw rages? And everything. <laughs> Poor Todd. Inspector Gina Gold summed it up. Well, I thought I'd let you know. I've moved Gabriel to the front desk for the rest of the shift. For any particular reason? Yeah, June said he had a little wibbly wobbly while he was out on the show. <laughs> yeah, a little wibbly wobbly. Yeah, a little wibble. And when he shot Kerry the other week with a rifle from the roof, that was a bit of a rifly roofly. Yeah. He did a what? <laughs> oh dear. Old habits die hard for Gina. She used to be a traffic cop. <laughs> <laughs> If 
trouble, though. The Sun Hill Squad will come to your aid as quick as lightning. No. Coming! <laughs> oh, can't be bothered. <laughs> she gets a stitch after three yards. <laughs> Don't you hate it, though, when you're trying to interrogate a suspect and he's constantly distracted by a fly? You tell me I can pay him back by bringing jobs to him. <laughs> you take my passport. I've been working for him ever since. Shall you help arrange the couriers for him? After they arrive, I sit with him in the flat until they are. Uh, until the jobs come. Which brings us to our TV highlight of the week. The Geico Caveman? Here comes a truck. <laughs> that was indeed a truck. You know what it's like? You fancy a quiet pint and you local, but there's always some nutter there behaving strangely. It's a special milk diet, and he's sucking the milk from the bread. The milk's a special milk full of vitamins and all the calcium that he needs. He loves that. If he was with his mother, she'd lick him after he'd suckled. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm simulating that by using some wet cotton wool on his tummy there. And that makes him go to the toilet. You're barred! <laughs> yeah. Get that man out of here. No, this was Nigel Marvin's <laughs> Animal Nightmares. Police? Yes. Nigel Marvin surely must be the clumsiest animal handler in the world. There it is. Look. Hey. This is away. Oh. oh <laughs> you know what they say? Once bitten, twice. <laughs> bitten. Jesus. And Nigel's little friend, that was Haw Haw the rat. He's a brown rat, of course, and he's very successful in Northern Europe and America. Still <laughs> waiting to break through into that tricky Japanese market. <laughs> Nigel taught us some things that rats like to do in their spare time. We're on a day out to a walk through shark aquarium. <laughs> Can we go to the shark aquarium, Daddy? <laughs> or an art gallery or a West End show? <laughs> what do you suppose rats taste like? I've got to ask you this. What does that boiled rat taste like, Chris? Boiled giant rat? Yeah. It's <laughs> juicy. It tastes, it tastes a lot like squirrel. Squirrel? I mean, squirrel. Like right. Oh, well, thanks for clearing that up. Yeah. Oh. I'll tell you, one of my favourite programmes at the moment, Selling Houses Revisited on Channel 4. It's just so exciting. I can hardly wait for next week's instalment. Next week on Selling Houses Revisited, I discover if a young Sheffield couple finally managed to buy the new house they'd set their hearts on. Drop everything! <laughs> Cancel that night out! Take the phone off the hook! I want no interruptions! I need to know if the Sheffield couple buy the house or not. What the hell? Hey, Tommy! Hey, what's that? Sounds like Jerry song. Hey, Tommy! What kind of transition is this? The revisited on the telly! <laughs> you know, the one where they find out whether they buy the house. What say we stop fighting for an hour or two and watch it? <laughs> yeah, all oh, right. Uh, after that, it's uh, location, location, location. I love that Kirsty also. Hooray! <laughs> My sheer <laughs> relativity is almost complete. He is equal. Hi, It's selling the houses revisited on the TV. I'm busy. It's the one very find out if they buy the house. Cutting. <laughs> oh, God. Speed ahead, Mr. Wilson. What's the rush? We've got to be back in time for selling houses revisited. <laughs> It's the one where we find out whether they buy the house. Oh, it's all right. I know a shortcut. Yeah. It's oh, icy, no. but quick. <laughs> Going back to Nigel Marvin's rat program, what happens when a brown rat invades a black rat's territory? Oh, shit. Whoa. The black rat is vanquished. In disputes over territory, size always matters. Well, you can't possibly say that on the basis of one little tussle, you know. 
Which is better, the black rat or the brown rat? There's only one way to find out. Fast! Come on, black rat. Oh, come on. Come on, black rat. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, I look like a draw to me. Johnny Rotten's nature programs. The no. nation votes with its feet. <laughs> After new drugs advert, DSI Meadows makes it clear where he stands. This will do for me. <laughs> and Stacy Slater tries for a job with Hugh Fernley Whittingstall. Dog food pie and a handful of weeds. Camera man on Corrie sent to bed early. <laughs> Coronation Street. Uh, it was the Barlow's big TV break as they appeared on the new TV quiz show, Top of the Tree. Oh, right. Don't try the crappers. Well, I don't want to wail in all the way through the show and ruining it. Oh, not that we'll be able to see it on this little thing. Yeah, Dad, why don't you go and buy another one? It's not every day on the TV, is it? No, it's every other day. <laughs> Very true. Top of the tree, though. What a show. It's enormously popular. I've got an audience of 200 waiting to be entertained. <laughs> 200 people all there to watch Top of the Tree. Just listen to the noise that audience makes. What does money do? <laughs> yeah, it's just like this show. We must have, what, 600 people in tonight? Isn't that right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Show Conviction on Tryout Channel BBC Three. Yes, the Tryout Channel. It's like throwing sausages at the ceiling. Every now and then, one will stick. <laughs> it's a cop show with a difference. One of the cop's main characteristics is that he's blurred. Oh yeah. <laughs> what's that? What's going on, Bill? Oh, what the hell? <laughs> And Steph was on show the roll, proving she can still pull the blokes. How good of you to come to see me at such short notice. Miss Stokes, how's your father? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just made the bed. <laughs> Picture this, though. You've got a small part in Emmerdale. It's only a small part, but you want to get it right. You want to be rebooked, maybe become a regular character. Who knows? You've got one line in the cafe. You have to say nothing. Why do you ask? To Viv. But lunch is approaching. You just can't keep your eyes off that menu. Nothing. Why do you ask? Nothing. Why do you ask? Forget the menu. Nothing. Why do you ask? Concentrate. What's your problem? Ham and cheese salad. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Why do you ask? <laughs> Holiday showdown now. And the Tunney family seemed unfamiliar with the format. They're worried they'll be taken somewhere they won't like. It's Holiday Showdown! <laughs> you won't like it that's the point of it yeah there's supposed to be arguments otherwise how are we the viewer supposed to feel better about ourselves <laughs> i don't know about you but when i go on holiday you can keep your sun you can keep your sea your leisure parks your fancy restaurants the only thing that really interests me is has he got a waxworks <laughs> the part there yeah. it's got the tower there it's got the swimming pool there it's got the waxworks there it's got the <laughs> You got the theme parks, you got the sea, well, you got everything, you got waxwork, you got everything. I know what you're thinking. It's got the waxworks, I want to go. But what's the food like? Mm. It's great. Sausage and chips. Two hot dogs. Steak and kidney pie and chips. Beans Cobb and chips. Burger and chips. A kebab. Burger and chips again. <laughs> chips and burger. But I really, really don't want another burger. What about a hot dog? <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly that conger eel is looking rather tasty. <laughs> The Haven Get on the Channel up. 4 told the story of Findhorn, a retreat for people in search of alternative lifestyles. And if music be the food of love... <laughs> yeah, you've not quite got the hang of that, love, have you? No, that sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that one. That either. Uh, there's no bog roll in the loo. Anyone seen the bog roll? <laughs> there were two rolls in there this morning. That wasn't you playing the pan pipes, was it? Enough! Hey! 
<laughs> Don't be hating. That's the music and the food. Spiritual enlightenment. Nice, but a hell of a cue for the buffet. <laughs> At the Findorn Centre, they believe in such notions as reincarnation. This fella thinks he's been reincarnated as a duck. <laughs> hey, who threw that papa dog? <laughs> One of their main instructors is Franco Santoro, a shaman. Whoa. Yeah, this is money for old rope, isn't it? <laughs> I could do this till the cows come on this. <laughs> that bloke in the yellow jumper, he's just a cabbie, came to pick someone up in 1979. <laughs> Why is that woman blind? <laughs> He's into tree hugging, which he finds extremely stimulating. I allow my whole body to embrace it from the belly up to the heart and also With my a little help, my friends. And I spend uh, some time there and I can sense my spine resonating with the tree and I can sense my old treeness. <laughs> Never heard it called that before. <laughs> They're a lovely bunch. If a little slow in their ways, they've been trying to come up with a logo for the centre. For almost a year now, the community has failed to agree on the design. Yeah, they've been trying for a year, still no agreement. They've had a few goes. They've even been given a graph. Someone's got a spirograph for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, that one just about says it all, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, we've come up with a few ideas for logos, yeah. Okay. Here's this one, look. Uh, Please bring own bog roll. I like it. Uh, there's this one. No campfires. Don't be hating. My favourite. I'm hugging it. <laughs> well, that's all we've got time for. I like that one. Who's what? That? It's the Codre family from Holiday Showdown. Oh, shit. Uh, Larry, any grub coming? Can I take your order, please? Let's eat to the beat. Oh, no. That's a fat food dog. Head bops angrily. Next tonight, a brand new series of celebrity challenges, starting with Vinnie Jones. Oh my god. With a little help from my friends. And then. Tonight, the X Factor moves to the new time of 6.55 when the six Romaniacs will be singing live for your vote. That's the X Factor tonight, 6.55 only on ITV1. Boo! I'll tell you what, brothers. Today to tomorrow is going to be like one of the craziest transitions from videos in channel history. We're going from doing TV burp, which is, you know, one of the most lighthearted things I usually watch, to threads, which... Fuck. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's tomorrow. Oh, God. Yeah, well, so, um, get ready for that. We had two more episodes in this TV burp series, um, which uh, we'll probably finish next month. Uh, drop them again. Let me know what series, if you have any, if you have a favorite series, uh, I should do next. I'll probably go back to the newer version of the show. Uh, but that is it for me today. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to leave it a like. If you didn't like it, don't. If you want to follow any of my social media links, they're all in the video description, as well as names on my Patreon. If you didn't know, you can be Patreon me for as little as $1 or £1. You get extra direction videos, as well as a reading your comments up daily, sometimes more. With all that being said, though, my name is Taffer, and i never action to Harry Hills TV Barb, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.